Welcome to the Board of Education's board meeting. May I have a motion to go into closed session? Pursuant to the general provision Article 3-305 and 3-104, I move we move, in, move into closed session to discuss the appointment, employment, assignment, promotion, discipline, demotion, compensation, removal, resignation, or performance evaluation of appointees, employees, or officials over whom this public body has jurisdiction and other personnel matters that affect one or more specific individuals to perform administrative functions and to consult with counsel. I second the motion. All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed say no. The ayes have it. We will be now going into closed session and reconvening at 6 p.m. Thank you. Welcome to the April 11th Board of Education meeting. This is a public meeting that is being videotaped for county citizens to review on QAC TV 7, a local cable station. The agenda is available on the information table. During this meeting, we ask that you turn off all your cell phones and hold personal conversations and comments outside of the meeting room. We will now stand and repeat the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. At this time, we will start with 2.02, uh, .02, approval of the agenda. I make a motion to remove agenda item 7.03 from the agenda, please. A second. I call for the vote to approve the agenda as amended. All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed say no. The ayes have it. <clears throat> Approval of the minutes, uh, open and closed session, March 7th and March 16th. May I have a motion to approve the open and closed minutes from March 7th and the 16th? So moved. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed say no. Abstain. The ayes have it. Um, at this time, we will uh, turn it over to Dr. King for recognitions. Absolutely. Let's all make our way forward. Good evening. I think we're on. So we've got a, a scant crowd tonight, but some very important people in the room. It is uh, Sudlersville Middle School night. So I want to first start out by saying congratulations to all who will be awarded tonight. We're very proud of your efforts. And we'll start with the Energizer Bunny Award with Chip and Wayne. Please come forward. So our Energizer Bunny Award recipient is Mr. Jonathan Schultz. Congratulations, Mr. Schultz. Got some encouraging words to read about you. Please stand forward. Mr. Jonathan Schultz is a true energizer uh, at Bunny at Sutlersville Middle School. He's the special education chairperson, and he never stops moving from helping students across content areas in various classes, keeping up with mountains of paperwork, meetings, sub coverage, and more paperwork. Mr. Schultz is always on the move. No matter what Mr. Schultz is in the middle of, he'll drop everything to help his students or his peers. He spends his lunch break working with students who need extra help learning how to play the drums. Each day he's in constant motion and he does so with a smile. In the midst of all his daily chaos, Mr. Schultz always keeps his sense of humor as we can see. He's a great stick figure artist, who would have guessed it? He keeps us laughing with comic strip creations, so keep on hopping, Mr. Schultz. The SMS family is extremely fortunate to have you on their team, as are we. Thank you for all that you do. Now, do you have anyone here with you, Mr. Schultz? Uh, my colleagues. Yeah, okay, so come on out, Principal Canna. And Assistant Principal, Ms. Smitten, please come forward. We're going to take a photo. Yeah. 
shift to the right? To her left. Miss Harlow, Our next award is the Shining Star Award, and that recipient is Miss Marsha Wilder. Come on down, Miss Wilder. I know, but that, that they're required to anything outside of that um, that's through a grant that allows it so we'll that I no idea. I did not <laughs> Outstanding. After several decades of exceptional service to the students of Queen Anne's County Public Schools, Mrs. Miss Wilder could have hung it up and enjoyed some well-deserved peace and quiet as she laughs at that. But that's just not who she is. Miss Wilder has continued to serve our community in a number of roles, including substitute teacher. Her passion for driving students to their highest potential has not faded one bit. At Sellersville Middle School, she can be seen each day extending her individualized touch to students within the classrooms and the hallways. Her inspirational approach has immeasurable effects on the students at Sudlersville Middle, just as it did in her classroom for many, many years. Miss Wilder has a no-nonsense but warm style that students and her peers are drawn toward. She serves as a substitute teacher, and as many teachers would confirm, she's a part of the heart and soul of Sudlersville Middle School. Miss Wilder's positive, can-do attitude and contagious laugh make our school a brighter place every day, they say. We are so lucky that she's decided to continue her career at Sudlersville Middle School. Miss Wilder, we thank you. Continue to let your light shine. <laughs> Just one more thing about Miss Wilder. So, uh, just when you think she's done it all, we had a, an additional hole in our schedule. Uh, we needed a teacher to take over one of our Title I classes till the end of the year, and we went and said, "Listen." Uh, we know we know you love subbing and running around, but we want to give you a classroom back with a little small group of kids, and she's doing fantastic, and those kids love her, and we'll probably try to twist her arm into that again next year. <laughs> Dr. Kane, I, a lot of times in the morning when I'm there in the hallway, Miss um, Wilder's like trying to dance with me. I, I don't know if there's a form I need to fill out about that, or okay, a picture, a picture, very good. Okay, good. Queen Anne's County Hero Award recipient, Assistant Principal Ms. Carrie Mitten nominated Jackson Lord. Jackson Lord, come forward. Let's give him a round of applause. She nominated Jackson because he's a shining star on a daily basis for students at Sudlersville Middle School. He's always respectful and helps out everyone around him. He'll sit with someone at lunch to make sure that they're not sitting alone, and he's constantly looking out for others without asking for anything in return. Jackson always has a smile on his face, and he's willing to be someone's partner to make sure that they feel a part of the group. 
He's a true hero in everyone's eyes. One of his teachers shared that Jackson is an everyday hero. He gives 100% every single day. He's a model student at the school. He's kind and respectful to his peers and to the staff. Jackson is always willing to help others to be successful. He will assist peers that may need a little extra help in the classroom without teachers even asking him to do it. Jackson has all the positive attributes of an everyday hero at Sellersville Middle School. We congratulate you, Jackson, on, and you continue to be a dynamic hero. Now, Come on, Bob. <laughs> Dr. King, can I call his teacher up too? Oh, Ms. Karras. Ms. Karras, come on. And our final award for tonight is the Difference Maker Award. And this recipient is Miss Ashley, and please forgive me, is it Deshaun? Okay, Miss Ashley Deshaun. She was nominated by her student. Kendall Buckles. I am doing well tonight. Congratulations. <laughs> All right. Finally got it right. So in two years, and this is, this is written by Kendall. So the comments that I'm reading are written by Kendall. In my two years of being a student at Sutlersville Middle School, I've had many different kinds of teachers. I'm an eighth grader and will be leaving for high school in a few months. This has been a really good year for me grade-wise, but not so good socially. As I, as I was struggling, the one teacher I could always look to for answers was my very own history teacher, Ms. Ashley Deshaun. She is trustworthy, a good listener, is always willing to help me with work I don't understand. She can automatically tell when my mood uh, changes or if something is wrong, and she always seems to know all the right answers to get me through the rest of the day with a smile on my face. History was never my favorite subject. It was by far my worst. I never liked to learn about things that happened so long ago. Mrs. Deshaun has taught me that it is indeed important because we as a country would not be where we are today without all the bumps in our history. Mrs. Deshaun understands that when you are absent, you sometimes need a little more help understanding things you missed, and she'll stay with you until you understand, regardless if she misses her lunch or not. Mrs. Deshaun is also into technology and teaches us how to do awesome things on our Chromebooks. She knows that students need to uh, different things to stay focused. I personally cannot focus without mu with, with music or anything, and Mrs. Deshaun knows that, so she lets me work in the hallway where I can always get more work done. Mrs. Deshaun does not let uh, what happens outside of school affect her mood during school hours. <laughs> and she always has the brightest smile on her face. Children are so astute, aren't they? <laughs> oh my goodness. Mrs. Shong has made a big difference in the way I approach, approach problems, the amount of thought I put into my work, and my opinion on history. She's a true difference maker because she understands that the smallest things make a big difference in the lives of students. Thank you, Mrs. Deshaun. Continue making a difference in the lives of our children, and congratulations. <laughs> So Kendall couldn't make it today, but we've got some goodies, no, and we're going to ask you. who you would like to have come up with you today. <laughs> excellent, excellent. Congratulations, sir.
What a write up. Yeah. Well done, right? Thank you very much. That's what I thought. Mm. That's what I thought. So. Okay, so we're going to move on. Uh, at this time, we will move on to 4.01. Board members, would you like to highlight any of your community involvement over the past month? I forget where we started last time, so where wh who would like to start? Carrie. Uh, All right, Carrie, right, go ahead. I'll start. Um, so, Susical at Queen Anne's County High School was fantastic. I was, <laughs> Sarah was in it. She was great. I was fortunate enough that two of my girls at the middle school um, were part of the junior cast. So, I was so impressed with how Mr. Callahan and Mr. Wright ran that whole show. Um, then, I was at National Junior Honor Society at Centerville Middle School, and Dr. Kane attended. <clears throat> and I wish that Jackson's mom had not left because I think I cried the whole time when my daughter's name got called. <laughs> I, I could understand what Jackson's mom was feeling. Um, went to the Chamber of Commerce Mixer at the Holiday Inn Express um, that's put together by Linda Friday. Um, so that was a nice evening out. Ken Island Winter Athletic Program uh, just kind of showed up there and was really impressed with uh, the track coach, Mr. Justin. I'm not sure if it's Holland or Hollis, but his interaction with the students and um, just his enthusiasm about that whole track program was really cool to witness. Um, a couple of commissioner budget workshops, which um, <coughs> they were what they were. Um, and then <laughs> there was the District 36 tour of um, the State House and Senate, and Dr. Kane and Greg Pluski were there, um, very packed, lots of representatives for the in, from the entire district. Uh, what else did I go to? A couple of track meets, been all over the place with track meets at the high schools. And last but not least, uh, last week at the All Shore Choir Concert, which was actually hosted here in our county. It's usually not in the county, or at least it hasn't been in the times that I've been. So it was neat to see um, kids from all over the <clears throat> whole Eastern Shore come to our county and they show up in the morning and they work together all day long so that they can give a cohesive performance together at night. And it was rocking. It was really beautiful to, to watch these kids. And um, I actually was sitting here, and there was a really talented singer. Uh, and I was like, wow, she really stands out. And I turned around, and, and it's this person right here in her picture. Oh, <laughs> yes, I was yeah. blown away by her for performance. <clears throat> so that wraps it up for me. Um, I attended a few things. I did also was at the, the Susical, the musical, which was great. Uh, you guys did a great job. And Abby. Thank you. <coughs> had no me. junior she, role in that, Carrie. She had, they could call her junior cast, but that was a major <laughs> role. Um, Thank you. The CMS National Junior Honor Society induction ceremony I attended and also drove down to Stephen Decatur for the District Band Festival, um, which two of our middle schools from the county attended, um, Centerville Middle School and Stevensville Middle School. Um, Centerville Middle School, I'm not sure how Stevensville did, but Centerville Middle School scored um, all ones, which is the highest you can get on every performance. 
and have qualified for the state competition, <coughs> which will be in May. Um, and then other than that, this month, uh, Saturday, I'll just throw this in, it, even though it's April, uh, Saturday I'll be attending the All Shore Band um, Festival in Salisbury um, with, with the a lot of students from Queen Anne's County and um, kids from all over the, from all over the Eastern Shore. Um, I, I also attended the Winter Sports Award Ceremony. Those are really good at Kent Island High. I had a conflict for uh, at Queen Anne's. I'm going to try to go to both of them. Um, and they appreciate us showing up. Yeah. I must have missed you because I, I, you were in the main lobby. Okay, I went into the, one of the back rooms just for the track portion. I thought I'd missed the whole thing and then discovered they were down the hall. So we must have just missed each other. Yeah, probably. Yeah, they, they had, in the big auditorium, they have all the sports and they, the boosters give out their um, scholarships and yeah. parents are happy with the money coming in. Yeah, I hope I make that next time. Um, and then the, the biggest part I wanted to talk about was legislative summary um, with the, um, from the General uh, Assembly. The General Assembly did complete their session. Um, this, I guess, was Monday. It might have been their last day. Um, the superintendent has provided a really great briefing in the last email she sent out on some brief snippets of things affecting education. There's just a couple I wanted to highlight. Senate Bill 1122 um, proposes that the uh, public vote on a constitutional amendment um, on the next election um, that would actually require the education trust fund money to go to education trust fund from the gaming. If you all recall a few years ago we voted and it was a big deal that we want to approve gaming so that at all, education, the money's going to go to education. Well what they ended up doing was sending money to education but then taking money out where we would have had a normal education budget. So it was really instead of supplementing it supplanted money. So this this um, particular constitutional amendment they're going to have the public vote on will lock it up, they call it a lock, some kind of lock word, box. Um, pardon, lock box it. In other words, we used to call it earmarking in the government where it will actually go in as extra on top of whatever the budget was, was at the time. So that's a really good plus for, um, for education for the students to supplement and, and um, not supplant it. The other thing that is uh, big is the uh, Safe, Safe to Learn Act of 2018, and this is on school safety. Um, and some key things they put in that is developing a, the Maryland Center on School Safety, which they, they have and we, we learned about last one of the recent meetings. Um, another one is, and they, for that they're going to fund 13 new positions. They're actually funding it. Um, each local district will be required to designate a school safety coordinator to lia be a liaison with the law enforcement and school system and this particular uh, Maryland Center on School Safety. And then the school resource officer training programs, they're, they're um, bringing those up and they're actually funding things that go along with this, which is, is new for the, um, the assembly. Um, and that will help us meet these requirements for uh, training of the resource officers. Um, they're also going to have a, each, each district has to develop a mental health services coordinator and there will be funding um, for requirements for capital budget needs identified by the uh, for physical school safety improvements. Um, so a follow up on that, I wanted to personally address a school safety um, issue. We had a great briefing with the um, the sheriff and the different law enforcement folks, um, one of the most recent events we had. <clears throat> and it brings to highlight the obligation of our, our board and our school system. Um, there are lots of opinions out there and strong feelings about gun on the gun debate, and I'm not even going to talk about that. Um, I've done a lot of soul searching over my thoughts on the school safety after uh, paying attention and reading lots of things about the most recent tragedies that have occurred. I strongly believe that as in all of our decisions we do as school board members, we should always be concerned about the students and they should always guide our decisions and our actions in every situation, no matter what people think um, politically about any of this stuff. After the recent tragedies at Marjorie Stoneman Douglas High School and Great Mills High School in St. Mary's County, we all have needed to think about our own school systems. 
and how we could be better prepared for a similar incident. St. Mary's County is very similar to Queen Anne's County in size and makeup. Um, so it is important to know we, never, we should never assume that it would not happen here. I have three key points I want to make. <clears throat> First, um, I do applaud the superintendent, our principals, and the student government leaders in the Queen Anne's County Schools. They were very thoughtful about how they would support the students at Marjorie Stoneman Douglas High School on National Walkout Day. Um, consequently, the students were able to support them if they desired in a respectful, retrospective feeling um, and in a safe manner. And I think that occurred. Um, and I'm very happy with that. Second, I'm encouraged by the strong coordination between our school system and law enforcement community. After the thorough briefing by the Elliott law enforcement officials and our operations officer, I believe that Queen Anne's County is working toward and keeping our children as safe and secure as we can for now, and they're continuing to make improvements wherever we can. And third, I am highly encouraged by the post-traumatic actions of the students at Marjorie Stoneman Douglas High School. I saw the testimonials, they're online if you want to listen to them, of the survivors of the tragedy and what they went through. Uh, who, these folks, these young folks experienced something that no child should ever have to endure, especially at age 14. Um, I have a son 14 and it always brings a tear to my eye to think that he would ever have to even think about this kind of a situation. I did um, read these testimonials. I attended the March for Life in D.C. and I observed the students. They were very smart, they were peaceful, they were thoughtful, and they were determined to do all they can to keep this from occurring in any other schools. As much as we old people complain about teenagers of today, these children gave me great hope for our country's future. I hope we as Queen Anne's County School Board members and as a school system can prepare our students to lead our country in the future, just like these students, they surely will do that, these students that I heard and listened to and watched. We have an obligation not only to teach our students academics, but we also need to teach them right from wrong and prepare them to live in our increasingly complex and difficult world. I believe they are capable of meeting these challenges. I learned that from these other students and we need to continue to help them be ready. So. Thank you, Bev. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Bev. That was wonderful. Sharon? Um, I have nothing to report, but I will remind everyone that this is budget time. It's very important for our school system and our county. I recommend everyone pay attention and attend the budget hearings. It's how your tax dollars are spent. It's your future year's budget. It's not anyone else's. And I welcome you to attend on the 23rd, 24th, and 25th. 23rd is at Bayside Elementary. 24th is at the Liberty Building in Centerville. 25th is in Sudlersville at their middle school. And they start at 7 o'clock. Thank you. Thank you. Well, I had the privilege of attending the uh, Madagascar Junior at SMS on March 23rd, and I didn't realize we had such talented young folks at Sellersville Middle School. Um, it was wonderful. I walked away with just an awesome feeling with these kids. And um, tomorrow night I will be attending the uh, National Honor Society at the Queen Anne's County High School, so if anyone wants to um, do that. And I just write myself a little note because, um, Bev, I'd like to just make one point to the public that is that was listening to us. Social media, parents, if you have questions, please. That is what she is for. <laughs> Email her. Yep. Call her. If there is a problem, if there is a question, if you hear things, we all know what social media is, it does to, it, it, one little thing, whoop, it explodes. So that would be my thought on that. Please contact, contact her. She'll be glad to answer your question. Without a doubt. Yeah. Yeah, so, without a doubt. 
So we're going to move to you then. Okay. <laughs> and just, just in response to what you just said, there has been, um, you know, quite a flurry of emails. It sort of comes in cycles when something happens. And so I do thank our public for uh, reaching out to myself and, and our executive team and, and to principals with regard to things that they hear, because we are reminding everyone, if you see something or if you hear something, say something. Uh, it will certainly take all of us. And while we're doing you know, all that we can do to keep our students safe, uh, we have to rely on the community, because you may hear something that we don't hear. So thank you for contacting us at this point, but please continue to do so don't hesitate. So um, I also attended the National Honor Society uh, induction, that ceremony at Centerville Middle School. We had another one last night at uh, Kent Island High School. We um, attended the um, winter athletics um, that awards program at Kent Island High School on the 15th. And also on the 15th, there is a new um, advisory council. So the Upper Eastern Shore CTE, Local Advisory Council, there was a meeting in Dorchester, so I had an opportunity to meet with lots of folks from across the uh, Eastern Shore who are working to really gird up our CTE programming. So that was a good meeting. There was a partnership breakfast that I attended. I believe Mr. Jack Wilson was at that one at the Family Center on the 16th. Had an opportunity to visit some of our students in their work-based learning experiences. So I went to visit Mark Johnson um, at the Bay Area Veterinarian Hospital. Went to Kent Island um, Fire Department and met with Kaylee Walters. At the Chesapeake Bay Environmental Center, met with Paige Gorman. And she showed me all about horned owls. And uh, we'll be coming back and we'll be putting a video out uh, with Talk Soup that showcases some of the things that our students are going. And so thanks to Mr. Tolly and all those involved with our students, the teachers and principals and, and our community members that are involved with our students on their work-based learning experiences and their internships. That was a fun day. At the, we, of course, presented our budget to the commissioners uh, on March 20th. And I thank all of our board members and our community, our employees, for coming out <coughs> to support us in that effort. On the 26th, as Ms. O'Connor mentioned, we were at the District 36 and 37 uh, night in Annapolis, met lots of our legislators. So uh, Mr. Jack Wilson was there, Delegate Ahrens was there, met up with uh, Delegate uh, Greist, um, Jay Jacobs, Senator Hershey, Linda Friday, and several, several other people were there. So that was a great night. Um, on March the 27th, had the opportunity to meet with all three of our superintendent advisory council. So met with our students, and Megan is a part of that uh, as well, and met with our staff and certainly met with our parents. And we talked about the budget. We talked about lots of things. And I want to commend our students just as uh, you did, Captain Kelly, because our students are so very insightful. We had a lot of conversation there. Um, they are. We started out talking about bullying, but our students sort of morph that conversation into um, what's fair and, and just really, in their own words, the ignorance that comes with some of the disparities that we experience. And, and yes, some of the bullying as well, but this racial issues and lots of things are on their minds. And I am just so happy that those students are a part of that conversation. So thank you. Um, and just a big thank you to my leadership team for supporting and holding down the fort. I was out last week due to a personal illness, but back and, and feeling good. And they held everything down. And I just want to say thank you to each of them. They are awesome. And I'm glad that they're here to support all of us, including myself. So thank you. That does it. OK, we'll move on to Mr. Peluski. Thank you, Madam President. Uh, just two things I'd like to draw uh, to your attention that I had the opportunity to. Uh, this week, I attended Mr. Rob Watkins, our supervisor of mathematics. We had a site visit from the state uh, mathematics supervisor from MSDE, and they're very interested. We're one of the only school districts in the state of Maryland that not only have our one-to-one -one initiative, but we also have a virtual platform that students are learning on, and they wanted to come and learn about that. As Mr. Watkins, uh, in the next couple of weeks, will be a panel member. Uh, to share his experience of the change process. Um, so we're very proud of not only his work of leading in mathematics, but I think it's, it says a lot about Queen Anne's County uh, and, and our recognition uh, around the state. Uh, the second thing, I had the opportunity to uh, represent Dr. Kane um, on the 5th. 
which you remember we're now in our third year of our Bowie State University partnership, uh, where we brought over, um, I think it was nearly 30 students, and they had the opportunity to uh, do some interviewing, they had an opportunity to view some of our schools, and I'd publicly like to recognize uh, Mr. Brad Angle, which is really one of the originators of this, uh, Dr. Pearson, who also had a huge hand in that, and also uh, Mrs. Debbie Siakos, which is in our HR department. Those three were the really drivers of organizing that event, and it has been, uh, I know some principals right now have already been making some phone calls uh, of potential candidates, so thank you. Thank you. Now we move on to the student board members. Who would like to start? I went first the past two times, I think. Oh, <laughs> oh you're so nice. Grace, it's all up I'll to go. you. <laughs> okay, um, so as Dr. Kane had mentioned, our National Honor Society induction ceremony took place last night, and thank you to Dr. Kane and Mr. Paluski for coming. And, um, and before, did you oh. mention that you serve as? President. Yes, <laughs> serves as president. Oh. Mm -hmm. Congratulations. Thank you. Um, we also have our French National Honor Society induction tonight, um, National English Honor Society induction on April 25th, and the Mu Alpha Theta Honor, Math Honor Society induction is on April 30th. Um, on April 17th, the PTSA is hosting a presentation on destructive decisions led by Mrs. Elsley. We also have our Prom Promise event on April 19th, which encourages students to make good decisions on prom night and beyond. Um, at the QACPS Teacher of the Year Gala on April 21st, um, Ken Island is proud to recognize Ms. Amber Wright as a teacher finalist. And then on April 22nd, four students from our school will be recognized as Dr. Ben Carson Scholars at the annual scholarship banquet. Thank you. All right. The class of 2020 will be holding a shoe drive. Bring all donations to the main office or to Ms. Coppage at the high school. Hopefully we can heal and save souls with this drive. It's a shoe in. <laughs> <laughs> Both varsity and lacrosse teams had significant wins over Cambridge South Dor Dorchester. Nice work by our athletes and coaches. Softball beat our in county rivals, I'm sorry, Grace Ken Island. <laughs> I'm really sorry. Men's tennis had a substantial seven to zero win over Colonel Richardson. The juniors and seniors of Queen Anne's County High School have the opportunity to attend a mock crash dramatization assembly on May 4th, 2018. This is this event is a part of the prom promise event that takes place every year at our high school and it has to do with drunk driving at prom and making the right decisions in the right times. April 18th at 6.30 p.m. Queen Anne's County High School will be holding a spring college planning night. All high school students and families are welcome. Our National Honor Society induction will be held tomorrow night. And Maryland Leadership Workshop registration just opened, and I had the honor to attend that program last year, and it was absolutely ama amazing. I highly recommend it. It'll be at um, the University of Maryland, Baltimore County this year, and I, I just really hope that kids get the opportunity to do that because it's absolutely amazing so that's it thank you thank you sir. i just have one more thing to say grace thank you for reminding us of the toy gala teacher of the year gala on april 20th i believe everyone is invited contact the central office and they'll give you the particulars but thank you for reminding us for that i appreciate it uh at this time you move on to the community participation has anyone signed up does anyone wish to speak? Then we can move forward. We'll move on to presentations, and Dr. Kane will let you take it away. Absolutely. Our first presentation is with regard to our summer school programs. So if Mr. Engel, Ms. Walber, and Mrs. Umberger would come forward with their presentation. Good evening, uh, board, uh, members, and exec team, Dr. Kame. 
We are here to present to you our summer school for 2018. Um, the purpose of our presentation tonight is to give you an overview of the summer programs that will be offered in the Queen Anne's County Public Schools. By the end of this presentation, we hope that you have a better understanding of the Title I summer programs and the high school summer program. The first slide um, speaks about the uh, summer programs that will be happening at Graysonville Elementary and Churchill Elementary. This is a combined effort between Title I and PFY funds. You can see the morning uh, session will be um, the academic piece of this program and then the afternoon PFY picks up with um, their activities. Kim, if you wanted to talk a little bit about the afternoon piece. Sure, the afternoon is the fun part. <laughs> <laughs> Um, we, we will basically um, be offering three different enrichment activities for the children to rotate through on a daily basis. One will be bucket drumming, and another one will be, it's called play of the day, but it's um, STEM-focused activities that are inspired by books. And the third activity is our Cardio Fit Project, which is um, a fitness program that's based on cardiovascular health. And then we have a bunch of field trips and special snacks and special days and just round it out. It's 18 days, 18 wonderful days. Yes, 18 days, Monday through Thursday at these two particular schools. You can see um, on the chart, it, it <coughs> talks about, about how many participants in the grade levels that are focused, um, how students are selected, um, the number of staff and the curriculums that, that they're using at those particular schools. They also, we also partner with the Maryland Summer Food Program to make sure that our students have a warm breakfast and lunch for those, for those programs. Um, one additional program that will happen this year that didn't happen last year will be at Southersville Middle School. They are having a summer program with about 30 to 40 participants. Um, again, um, lunch provided by the Maryland um, Summer Food uh, program. There'll be an operation Monday through Thursday like um, Graysonville and Churchill. The difference is they're going to, um, they plan some theme kinds of field trips to, to go along with the program and they'll be taking those field trips on Fridays. I have a question. Um, yes. How do you, how do they go about choosing the students? I mean, I so that's under the that. entrance criteria. Yeah, I see that. But they, they um, whether or not they're in an intervention, <coughs> um, teacher recommendations, uh, special education, all of those things put together. I can tell you that uh, um, they, the, the uh, school level grade level teams work together to look at their data. They sit and, and, and um, look at all of the, the data and then look at teacher recommendations and then send invitations out to those students. Um, they, they have a first list and a second list because oftentimes um, families choose not to have their, their students involved in the program and then they'll go to the second list. But a lot of it um, <coughs> is based on academic needs. Is there any um, transportation? Transportation is included. It is, okay. Yeah, definitely is and it's door-to-door -door transportation as well. So the last program that I'll speak about is um, our Southersville Elementary program that, that partners with the Migrant Program. Um, we are in session five days a week because of partnering with the Migrant Program. Um, we do keep that, our, our program in session for the five days during the week. Um, in session a few more days than the other ones where we'll be in session for 23 days. There's some criteria that we have to meet with the migrant funds um, and we need to be in session that many days. Um, it is a full day program using these, the, the uh, Title I funds and the migrant funds. You can also see um, we serve birth to 18 for migrant students and then our Title I students are, um, we're actually this year even going to uh, have a program that will be incoming pre-K students. So the Judy Center will partner with us and they, are, um, they have made these connections and students that we feel even need another little jump start to pre-K um, will, will have a classroom of those students. You can see on the last column the, the, the braided funding that happens with this program where we're talking um, Title I funds, Title III funds, migrant funds, Judy Center, and also there's a small immigrant um, grant as well. Um, so that program um, operates with a lot of braided funding. Any, any questions about those? All right, turn it over to Brad. 
Uh, good evening. Um, my name is Brad Engel, and I'm the supervisor of Steam Sports Services. And I have been running the high school summer school program countywide for uh, the last five years. It's been a very successful program. Um, it is a credit recovery program. So when a student is in high school and they fail a class, that's a huge deal. So what we need to do is find a way to help them get that credit back, and that's what credit recovery is all about. Um, our summer credit recovery program averages about 80 credits recovered during the summertime. It's all done online and it's all done uh, during the month of July. The next Can I ask one question about that? Sure. Do these kids that, that are targeted for the summer school, do they get to graduate with their class? Yes, if they accumulate the uh, uh, correct, uh, you mean if they're seniors? If, yes. How does that work? Well, I would say this. If they, obviously, summer school is after graduation. Absolutely. However, um, if they do, um, you know, pass the course, we are able to um, get their diploma and count them in that, in that class. So if a child comes, goes to summer school and they earn the credit, they can still count for the class of 2018. But they don't participate in the ceremony. But they can't participate in the, the ceremonies. They have not, no, because they haven't met the requirements. Right. right. That's what we've been okay. doing. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Sure. So summer school, we're going to start it on July 9th. It's a little later. I think we're going to skip that whole July 4th week. It's kind of a you know, difficult week um, with people being out. So it's going to, we're going to have two sessions. This is the same schedule uh, that we've run in the past. It's going to start at 8 o'clock in the morning, run until 1045. And then we'll have another session that runs from 11 to 145. So we'll have two sessions. We'll have four content teachers. And we will provide transportation uh, from Ken Island High School. We will not provide transportation for Centerville and the North. Um, okay. So the we it, it's a self-funding program, and and uh, students have been paying paying two hundred dollars per credit and one hundred thirty-five for reduced lunch and ninety dollars per credit for free lunch. And we do have scholarships available for students. So if there is a student in need, we work with the families. Um, and then. Sometimes the question is asked, well, what if, you know, if these are students that um, had challenges during the school year, what if they don't finish on time? And, you know, my philosophy is let's get them through. So we have extra days that we allow <coughs> in early August and we pay teachers extra money to help them get through because, you know, again, my philosophy is let's get them these credits and, uh, you know, and let's, let's get them on track for graduation. Sorry, another question. Sure. It's okay. <laughs> So we transport child children from Ken Island High School, but we don't transport them from the North County? Is we that what you been. said? That's right. Why we, is that? We don't have enough in North County? No, they, they go from the no. high school. Only from the high school, right? You have to get the kid to the high school. Is that right? Right. The kids have to get themselves to Ken Island High School. Yeah. To the high school. To the high yeah. school. We do, we, so, um, yeah. So basically, the because home. the program's in Centerville, I think the way it was designed, is that you know parents have to transport kids to Kenilworth High School and then they catch a bus from Kenilworth High School. But in the past, we have not had a bus that runs from the north to Queen Anne's County. They, there's been you know requests for that, but we have not done that. Okay, not that far. Um, back to the online summer school. Yes. <clears throat> What's the difference between the online summer school requirements or how you approach that <laughs> as far as? Mm -hmm. I want to do it online as opposed to this, or are they two completely different programs? No, it's just, it's the same thing. So and you have we do, an option. Well, we do have some students that prefer not to come in face to face. Gotcha. So they can and do that's the online an option at home. for them. We we try to personalize mm -hmm. uh, the instruction for every mm -hmm. student, and if we feel like a student needs to be there, uh -huh. we really encourage the parent. So to, we offer both. Yeah, we do I offer think both. That's yeah, excellent. We, that's right. We excellent. do offer both. Pro, yeah, probably wasn't clear about that. Th that was my uh, question. Are, is it offered both to everyone? Yes. And because there certainly are some students who will have a preference for very strong reasons, and I'm glad to see we recognize that. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, and then and and there there are many reasons why a child fails a class. And it doesn't really matter why. Yeah. Right. Uh, the, they could feel just as strongly about walking in the building. They want to be there. That's so right. So I'm glad we are able to service both sides of that. Yeah, absolutely. Thank yeah, you. Absolutely. Right. Good question. Um, pr uh, there are private schools that um, students maybe don't pass, and they, I knew that from a friend of mine whose child did not pass a class at St. Mary's High School, and they the school doesn't offer it the summer, but they have to take it in the summer, and the parent has to locate it. 
So do you accept students Absolutely. from private? You do. Absolutely. And if they're Queens County residents, they pay the county price. If they're out of county, we have an out of county rate that we charge. It's a little bit higher. Because we do have students that have, in the past, come from Anne Arundel that have been living in Anne Arundel. So, uh, you know, the rate is higher for those students. So sorry, if their parents work here and they live out of county, they can come to their summer school with their parents' yeah. schedule. That's excellent. That's right. That's we, we, we've we've had students from Kent County, from Wonderful. Calvin County. Yep. Yeah, because, yeah, we, we'll help all kids, sure. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you. And we offer, uh, uh, these are the courses that we offer, as in the past. Uh, we do have a special educator as well. Um, so we do have a very high success rate, and, uh, and we have a lot of kids, and we're looking forward to another great summer. Questions? I'm sorry, any other questions? But <laughs> we already interrupted your <laughs> presentation, <laughs> so I think okay. we've asked all of our questions. <laughs> Thank you, guys. Okay. Okay. Very important. Thank, Thank you. you. All right, our next presentation is uh, also by Ms. Susan Walbert. She's going to talk to us about the kindergarten readiness assessment. Okay, I think I forgot to do this before, so I'll introduce myself. <laughs> um, my name is Susan Walbert, and I'm the supervisor of early learning, Title I, Title III, and migrant education. And this presentation, I'm here to talk to you about the kindergarten readiness assessment. So just to give you an overview of what um, this assessment is, this is um, used in Maryland, um, and other, actually more than 40 states, use this assessment to measure children's readiness to do kindergarten work. Um, the KRA is developmentally appropriate observational and assessment tool that relies on performance tasks and observations of children's work and play to measure specific skills and determine what each entering kindergartner knows and is able to do across four domains. The domains are social foundations, language and literacy, math, and physical well-being and motor development. It measures the knowledge, skills, and behaviors that children bring with them to school and should be able to demonstrate at the start of kindergarten. So again, those domains, um, social foundation, so an example of a, um, a skill that a child uh, would show in this area could be getting along with others, could be taking turns, um, it could be how uh, the child responds to um, maybe not getting their way, those kinds of things. Those are. Um, demonstrated in that area. Language and literacy, um, obviously um, maybe after a read aloud is a child able to share some things about the book when asked. In the mathematics world um, or in this domain it could be that a child um, is able to count to 20, um, maybe looking at three objects and knowing right away that that's three, um, what we call subitizing later on. <coughs> um, physical well-being and motor development, um, in this area, it's things from kicking a ball to running to jumping, so showing that coordination as well as um, washing their hands after they go to the bathroom or covering their face when they sneeze. So those are an example of the domains. So that how are the kids measured for this? Um, they get a, um, a demonstrating readiness, which means that they uh, demonstrate the foundational skills and behaviors that prepare them for, for kindergarten. They could be approaching readiness, so they're demonstrating some of the foundations. And then they're emerging, um, which means they're showing minimal foundational skills. So here's our data. Um, in the parentheses is the state data. I just kind of wanted, and there's another slide that shows this a little bit better too, but wanted to show you um, that right now, and this, this, was, uh, this happened in September, so it's, it's this year's kindergarten students, 48% of them were demonstrating readiness. 45% were demonstrating readiness at the state. 39 approaching, 37 at the state, 13% were emerging, and 18 at the state. So we're a little bit better than the state average. In the domains, you can see that under uh, social foundations, 63% of our students were demonstrating readiness in that domain, 35% in language and literacy, 35 in math, and 67 in physical well-being and motor development. If you click on that link, um, it gives you a, a very um, pretty version of all of this with colors and things that, that, the, um, that Ready at Five has, has created. So if we look at those again, this is another chart that kind of shows you 
where <coughs> Queen Anne's County was that 48% of our students were ready for kindergarten and at the state level 45 and then that gives you another picture of where we are as far as our domains. Can I ask a question? Yeah. When is the KRA administered? It's in September. And so it's within the first couple weeks of, of the kindergartner starting school. Okay. And is it um, administered again at the end to, to no. judge? Th this, is, this is a one time, um, it, it, it's data for us to, and I'll talk about that a little bit more, but it's really data for us to look at what we need to do to prepare our students better for kindergarten. So in kindergarten, once they have this data, our, our teachers certainly use this data for grouping and, and for knowing you know, which, one of our, which groups of our students need extra support. Um, but then the kindergarten uh, students also take an assessment that, that we've created at the end to show growth. Okay, thank you. So here's a chart that was taken from the state um, presentation and you can see where um, Maryland falls in this particular chart um, with all the other counties and where we are. So we're about 10th um, in the state um, compared to everyone else and where, where our readiness falls. I can tell you that Kent County, um, we, I went to a, a state briefing and, and several of the top counties were um, sat kind of in a panel session to share with us what, what sh tell us about your successes. And um, Kent, Garrett, Carroll, Somerset, they all have universal pre-K, they have their kids all day long. Kent mm -hmm. County has about 120 kindergartners, so we have about 511. So there's some, there's some reasons why, you know, they're, they're at the top, some very um, glaring reasons, you know, for those counties. Universal pre-K being everyone who's Every eligible kid goes is all accepted. Day. Yes. Yeah. Every Thank kid you. all day. So, and again, when you have 111 students, yeah, it's makes a little a bit more doable. difference in the report. All right. Thank you. Um, here's our farm, I mean, here, our student groups as far as readiness are concerned. So 32% of our farms kids demonstrated readiness, 20% of our English learners, 16% of our children with disabilities. 35% of our African American students, Hispanics, two more races, and then our, our white students. This slide demonstrates, or, or it tells us where our readiness scores were by our elementary schools. So, in all of this data, I can, I'll, I'll tell you at the end how important it is for us to make decisions and, and to move forward. The, 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 um, so the number next to the school, so Centerville Elementary, 30% of their students were demonstrating readiness. The next column over, 55 of those students, I wanted to show you that 55 of those students um, were in our pre-K at Southersville Elementary, um, whereas um, that's out of 143 kindergarten students. So 143 kindergartens were tested that attend Southersville Elementary, 55 of those students um, had pre-K. That's the Central Elementary, you mean? Mm -hmm. So it, it goes right across. That's so right. Central Elementary. Okay, I Mattapie. thought you said Sellersville Elementary. Oh, I'm That's sorry. I, I might have. But at Sellersville, you can see um, with the pre K expansion grant that was put in place this year at Sellersville Elementary, they have full three full day programs. So you can see that 40 of those kids, um, well, they, we didn't have the pre K expansion grant then, so there was two classes. So 20, I mean, 40 of the 46 um, tested received pre K. And, and the 30 sense. percent is of the 143 that were in the yes. program. 30 exactly. percent scored. Right. We're demonstrating that readiness. Level. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank and you very and yet much. Of the center, uh, Sellersville Elementary, you only had 30 percent. Was 30. almost every one of those pre-Kers went. All of us. And it was a um, pre-K. It seems strange. We, and each time, it seems like it, it seems like each year there's a different size, a different number that, that follows the class. So this this particular um, class is a little bit smaller. This year, our or our kindergarten class for next year is almost 60 that that will um, that will enter kindergarten, and all of those students have received pre-K. Do we have numbers on these students as far as whether or not English is their second language? The, the slide before showed okay. a, showed all of our okay. students. Um, yeah. Very good. Wait, I th I th there's, an, there's a problem here. If Sellersville Elementary, we're, somehow we're not getting through to them in pre-K then. Well, it, it's, it, 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 there's a lot of, um, a lot of uh, things that, that 
this data shows us that we need to do. Um, and, and I'll speak to that at the end. I, it, um, yes, yeah, so 48% so of our students are ready for kindergarten, but almost half of them are not. So, so yeah, we have some work to do. Okay. No, I just, but I don't know if it matters that there's only 46 at Settlersville, there's 143 in Centerville, and they have the same exact right. result. Right. That's yeah, but saying. She's also, yeah, but she's saying 40 yeah. out of 46. Yes. Right. Mm -hmm. 40 oh, out of 46 Center, were right. in a pre-K so, program, right. and Centerville is 55 out of 143. Scored. Right. right. But I'm talking about the percentage. Y'all are talking about the numbers that attended pre-K. No, I'm talking about the percentage. They're I'm equal. talking about the percentage. I got, I'm saying yes. is there equal percentages? Uh -huh. Where they ranked um, right. after the KRA, and it seems we should have been doing a little better with SES during the because of the number. According of, to the data, the, yes, yeah, so you would have. So you we would do think work that if do. we had our students in a half-day program, um, that that we, you know, we might show better results than that. Um, we're hoping that, and and again, a lot of this data we have to go back and we have to look at. Um, the There's other things too, mm -hmm. right. you know, that that come into play when. Mm -hmm when we're looking at our individual students and their individual needs. So, let's talk about our strengths. The, the, the one strength that we have with this particular program is last year we did a census. No, excuse me, last year we did a sampling. So that meant that only five out of every classroom were given this assessment. So when you look at, at, at a sampling, and they try really hard to make sure the sampling is, is a reflection of, of your population. But it doesn't, so it gives us an overall score, but it doesn't really allow us to dive into the data to go back and, and see where were those students prior to entering kindergarten. Um, where can we put some resources to support our prior care partners? Um, so we're excited that this year is the first year that we have had every kindergarten student was assessed and we have a, a data point for every single student. Another strength is the fact that we were able to um, receive the pre-k expansion grant for Southersville and this year they are participating in an all-day program so all students have been um, in this all-day program and we are keeping our fingers crossed and everything else that that data will come out looking good for, for our um, students the pre-k expansion grant for for this coming school year has um, I've just finished that and we've also um, extended to try to get one more full day at Churchill Elementary so we'll see how that goes. Um, this particular assessment, it, it's, it's very unlike other assessments where you, you take it and then it disappears and then like eight, week, eight months later you get the results. Our, our teachers, as soon as the child is finished, can dive into a, the platform and get the data right away. They'll know right away where their kids performed low, where they did great. Um, the, the beautiful, um, Reports and all don't come out until later, but they are able to dive right in and can start their grouping right away. So that's a great thing about this. We also provide time for our pre-K teachers because really, um, so the kindergarten teachers have only had these students for a couple weeks. Our pre-K teachers that have had these students are very excited about diving into that data to see you know, how their students performed. So we're able to have time for them to do that as well and also to make decisions on, on lesson planning and instruction according to what that data is. So we're happy about that. So we know, and I'll just read this to you, that it, it indicates some success to celebrate, but it also shows us points of where we need to do some more work. Um, as the data shows, there are many school readiness challenges that must be addressed head on if we're gonna close this achievement gap. So that's where we are. And our challenges, 48% um, demonstrating readiness in the 16, 17 school year. Um, there was actually very little increase in our scores as well as the state. It pretty much stayed the same. Um, we have approximately 300 students in Queen Anne's County that are not served by a pre-K program. How many, I'm sorry, 300? About 300. Mm -hmm. Prior care, we we haven't done the best we could, and we're and we're we're. I'm very excited about what we're going to do this year as students register for pre-K. Um, our, our collecting the prior care data was a um, was something that was done in InfoSnap, and I I don't know as that parents always had a grasp on what they should check as far as that's concerned. Um, 
you could have a child that went to Head Start in the morning and then maybe pre-K in the afternoon. You have a child that went to Mom's um, in the morning and then maybe pre-K in the afternoon. You have a child <coughs> that maybe went to uh, an all-day um, an all-day daycare facility. We have created a form where counselors or whoever will be taking um, the information from pre-K, I mean from kindergarten parents will actually ask them and they'll be, we'll be able to capture that information on this prior care sheet. Um, it's going to come back to my office and we're going to actually sit and really, really dive into this data so that we can reach our prior care partners. And that is our daycare centers. That, uh, that, that is my mom down the road. To be able to get some information in their hands to know these are things that you can do when you don't even know you're doing them, in, you know, in the kitchen or in the living room or while you're reading a book to, to, your, um, to the child that you're caring for. Um, the the uh, testing dates sometimes you know the, the within the first two weeks of school our um, kindergarten teachers maybe haven't been able to establish a, a you know a solid relationship with some of these kids yet um, so that sometimes is a challenge but we're going to work on that too so next steps there's an, one question on uh -huh. that slide you said 48 percent demonstrating readiness yes, no increase so did we make any changes that we should have realized so, so last more year or? last year it was a sampling so I don't know is that the data was owned as much as it should have been or it could have been because it, you know what I mean it was just that that sampling of students um, there wasn't an increase in the state either um, one thing that we do know is that our lowest domains are our language and literacy and our um, math and those are things that we need to attack um, our PK teachers are actually, um, they're having a professional development in April where the state's coming and we're going to talk about how to mathematize um, our centers. Um, it's very easy, I think, for teachers to walk around and put literacy in the centers. You can easily, you know, um, if you have the, the, the center where you have all the kitchen appliances, you can, you can put the name of the refrigerator on the refrigerator and sometimes it's a little bit more difficult to mathematize things. So we're going to get some help with that. Um, the, uh, we, had a, um, we had a KRA information night in February where we invited um, caregivers in. We had about 40 participants, so they came and we did a little round robin for them. We set the, this room up with a domain in each corner and they were able to walk around and get some ideas. Our, um, we had some pre-K and kindergarten teachers that came and manned each one of the domains and um, it was very successful and we got some really, really good feedback from that. So we're going to keep moving in that direction. Susan, what did you find your majority of the participants, participants were? Participants, majority, um, it, was, it was half and half. It was family daycare centers and then actual centers, gotcha. you know, with a paid staff. Okay, very good. We will, um, we're going to continue to get to, to do these deep dives with the kindergarten teachers as soon as this data is available um, to have them to be able to group our students to to get them on the right path for those who are not demonstrating readiness. And also, what I just mentioned about the pre-K teachers um, providing that professional development in the areas we need. Um, also looking at maybe having some of our pre-K teachers involved in the test administration. Um, they will, they'll, they'll have some um, relationships that they have already built with some of these um, little people, so maybe they can step in and do some of the, of the testing. Um, I spoke actually, to you about, I'm sorry. You actually do testing uh, or are you, is it an observation? Half of, of it is observation okay. and the, the, the other half can either be on an iPad where the student actually answers the question on an iPad or they can, if, if the teacher would um, wants to pull it and do a paper pencil thing, they can do that as well. <coughs> okay, thanks. But 50% but of it is observational. I talked to you a lot about the prior, prior data, prior care data collection. Um, that is something that's that's near and dear and, and 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 i really am excited about getting that data back so we can reach out start building those relationships with our partners um, i just did a, a professional development last week with our head start partner um, that's in graysonville that that um, touches a lot of our students and it was very well received by them as well and and beginning to to uh, again strengthen those relationships with our with our prior care and the last thing is um, we are working on very hard on our Striving Readers Grant, um, which uh, is due in a couple weeks, and 15% of what we're asking for has to go for birth to five. 
and we are really um, we are focusing on those relationships, partnerships, and and providing professional development to to our prior care partners. Questions. Oh, you know us. We just interrupt you all the way <laughs> That's through. That's okay. <laughs> That's good. Anybody have any other questions? No, but thank you for that information. That was very insightful. Very good. All right. Thank, thank you. you. Thanks, Walbert. Thanks, Susan. There's a cooler over there. Can you shake? So you want to ready to move on? Sure. So 7.04 uh, really is our expenditure report. If you've had an opportunity to take a look at that. And if there were any questions, I would like to add while you pull that up that um, we do have a transfer letter. The transfer letter that is attached in board docs is going to be revised because we are anticipating um, there's a transfer request for um, Dr. Gorsuch, our interim CFO, and the, the funds to pay him. That represents April. What we're going to do is we're going to combine April and May since we anticipate um, that there could be a longer transition before our uh, CFO is hired. So that transfer letter is going to be revised to reflect April and May. Um, so what it reads right now, I believe, is $10,600 for the first transfer, and it is going to be revised to $21,600 to reflect 13 days of pay in April. And I'm sorry, Dr. Dr. Kane, not to interrupt you, but the transfer letter that I have is not what your Mine is. Down at 9. Oh, that's in the approval. Oh, okay. We we skipped ahead. Yeah. Expenditures. Did, did I skip? Did I yeah. skip? Well, the monthly expenditures. You know how she does the um, line item or category. That's what they're looking at. Oh, oh I, really I think you're right. Either. We're looking at the wrong thing. No, you're you're right. Oh, we're, you're okay. right. It's in the right place. But what so we did, we revised, revised this letter. Mm -hmm. And we what's the total now? One. So the category that you don't have on here is contracted, is salaries to contracted services. It's going to be $21,600. Okay. This one represented an additional transfer, which we did not have to make. So we're going to revise that amount. The other two transfers that you see on there for um, equipment, that is correct. Um, maintenance is correct. I have a couple of questions on that. Um, we didn't, um, isn't Robin being paid out of a, retirement monies or so didn't we still have money left over for this year for right so her salary that was allocated for the year is what we're using to pay our interim oh okay mm -hmm. so you've changed it to a different because category. she left before the oh, end of the year so there's contract mm -hmm. okay got yeah it. Right. so that's why it's contract. coming from salary going to contractual yes. services mm -hmm. why did it go from 10,000 to 21 is, it's, it, is it's that what you said month. Yeah, so uh, initially that was um, for uh, Dr. Pearson and um, also for Dr. Um, Gorsuch, but we did not have to transfer this fund right here for Dr. Pearson, so we didn't need to put that in there. Bottom line is the figure that you're looking at right now is incorrect, and we're going to revise that. But I wanted to make that statement publicly so that everybody knew who looked at Maybe we should table it. <laughs> we, we, we don't need to table it. What we're going to do is we're going to revise it. So what, because I clicked into what you're clicking into. Don't we need to approve Bordeaux. this tonight? We're, we're going to, we're going to, we're going to uh, come back to it. So we're going to revise it. And we're going to present it to you again. Okay. Tonight. Tonight. The reason I'm saying anything is because it's in board docs and people need an explanation for what is already in board docs. And I wanted to let you know what the change was going to be. So that's why I'm saying anything about this at all, because this document is going to be revised. Okay. Okay. So we can go ahead and we can um, move forward with the, the other documents that are in that one, the uh, expenditure reports. There, this isn't one that the, co the county has to approve. This is one where 
the county would that? have to approve it. This but one you says approve it within first. major categories. Am I looking at a different one? That's what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying. It's completely wrong we're on what looking we're looking at. at. We're, sorry, what we're looking, we're looking the at. The transfer letter that we're looking at. It's 25,500. I'm, I'm, I'm clicking on the same thing that you're, you're clicking on. I thought it was 25,500. Yeah, that's it. That's what, what I asked. Said this afternoon. Yeah. Within major categories. But oh, there's another one on here that is between categories, I believe. But either way. But we, salaries and contracted services are two different categories, no, right? No. Or no. no. They're under instruction. Mm, that one is administrative. Did you want to speak to that, Mr. Yes, Dr. Gorsuch? The, the, category, the category is administration. The subcategory is salaries, contract of service. I thought we were okay transferring money within our subcategories ourselves without commissioner approval. This isn't this doesn't have to be approved. This is just letting them know. Well we have to notify the county whether or not we anticipate approval is practice and I don't know what that practice it, is here but we have to notify them but it's not what I'm saying to them oh. is that this board has to approve it we notify the this is a notification right. not a request so we always do approve. this that's why okay. you you do the okay. same thing each time we do a transfer we always notify them we present it to okay. you for approval I, I and was we a little forward confused. it to them I'm but sorry. I'm I'm lost somewhere here because <laughs> I'm a little with you poof, <laughs> somebody else with me too because yeah. So this says numbers, so salaries lost. to to con contracted services says twenty five five. Are we adding twenty one thousand to that? No. Okay, that's um, what I need to know. Change. Correct. We're, we're going to take. We're going to change that change totally. That totally. It's going to be a total of twenty one thousand six hundred dollars. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. And that would represent. 13 days to pay Dr. Gorsuch in April and 14 days in May. Okay, so that's so the 10,000 is what's changing. Days in Whole May. So the 20, so the, the total 21,600 21, is for 27 days to uh, Dr. Gorsuch. That is correct. Got it. Okay. And we're not asking the commissioners to give us permission. We're no. notifying them that we made this category change because we're in our guidelines. You approve it, mm -hmm. we inform right. the commissioners. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. well, Thank you. I'm not approving. Otherwise, mm -hmm. the expenditure reports, have you had a chance to view those? Okay. Was there anything that you wanted to add, Dr. Gorsuch, with regard to the expenditure reports? No, I understand that these are pro forma, these two reports. Mm -hmm. One is the high view by category that you've mentioned, and the other is then by subcategory, how those categories are divided among the subcategories. Uh, the good news is that uh, we've only spent 95% of our budget so far, uh, and also we have an available balance to the good in each of our accounts. So. Uh, we, we have enough money to see through the end of the year, and uh, we will be looking at that very carefully to make sure that we don't indeed overspend, uh, except, you know, perhaps where it's not avoidable, then we would have to ask for an adjustment to the category right. and approval by the commissioners. Gotcha. I was wondering how the uh, fuel situation going. I mean, we're still cold. I mean... It, are we using a lot of and gasoline? Got to be going up pushing there. the power. <laughs> We've oh. arranged for the temperature to be in the 80 later. <laughs> <laughs> 80 Please do so. that. <laughs> Please. <laughs> I think it's Actually, yeah. Yeah. a day or two. I need to take a look at that. But last I had looked, about uh, three weeks ago, we were doing all right with that. Uh, and we had that cold snap that was really. I mean, it took a pounding <laughs> on us. But um, it's been cooler, but not it's that significant cold. amount where yeah. we're running the building. You know. 24 7 but uh, I think we're in pretty good shape with that yeah. I can tell you the electric bills went back down after that yeah snap as you all know but that was a major increase there so I can let um, you know how about our gasoline do we pre buy that or do we buy that as we need it gasoline. based on today's prices because they go up every day they're really shooting up well sudden. gasoline and diesel we work with public works okay and we, we purchased that all together so okay. for our buses and for our maintenance fleet right. yes so right. we have a pretty good so it's kind of this. already purchased now we worry about next purchase bill okay well, thank I'll you take a look at the heating oil because I mean, we should be coming right towards the end of it I mean usually about April we should that's hope. end of April we shut the boilers I hope it's over yeah. Let's hope. 
Dr. Gorsuch, I do have a question. Yes. So <laughs> I'm, I'm trying to wrap my head around this. <laughs> okay, so under this is we're back to the letter part of this okay okay under major categories where it says instruction and it says uh salaries to contracted services for 25 5 then underneath of it says to transfer funds to contracted services to pay psychological services service pro providers providers service providers for students so are we we are taking that totally out then we're not asking no. for no. any funds for that it, no. if i could with this letter, at least the copy that I have, uh -huh. that I believe was in board docs, um, originally there were only transfers to instruction as a major category and maintenance of plant as a major category. Right. We more recently added as a major category the change we needed under administration. So there are three major categories addressed in the letter, administration, instruction, yes. and maintenance. The first category should show on the sheet you have Salaries to contract the services, $10,400. That figure has been changed to 21600 to okay. reflect two months instead of one month. One month, exactly. The other two, the major category of instruction remains as you read it. Okay. And the major category for maintenance of plant remains as you see it here. Okay? I so, understand. So those transfers, okay. Okay, that, that so that's so that that is staying under, but now we're just adding the twenty one thousand six hundred. Right, it's just the number that. that's changed. Yes. Okay, just okay. The number. That's so the confusion is you don't have that ten thousand six hundred no, number. No, no, that's right. why. So we're adding right. twenty one thousand six hundred for admin. Admin. Okay. okay. These other numbers stay the same. Okay. But we add the twenty six. Wait, twenty one. Yeah. that. Okay. Correct. All right. That's what I'm trying to. Okay. And our letter, our letter that we had access to, didn't have the have that part. Mm -hmm. Right. I was I was not aware that you did not get the revision. Okay, because it was just done this morning. Right. Right. <laughs> okay. So, okay. are other questions with regard to the transfer no, or the expenditure report? I, I think report? I'm okay now. Okay. So, should we move to um, accept this letter with the modification they're going to make? I'm not accepting it until I see it in writing. No problem. And that would come below anyway for actions. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay, so okay. we're ready to, you want to break or you want to continue? I would like to just continue if everybody else is okay. Okay. Everybody else okay, okay with it? Okay. Okay, so now we will move on to the HR report. May I have a motion to approve the HR report as presented? As amended. As amended. Oh, that's right. Mm -hmm. As amended. I'm sorry. I forgot about that. One more time. May I have a motion to approve the HR report as amended? So moved. Or. A second. Uh -huh. Sorry. <laughs> All in favor say aye. Aye. All opposed say no. The eyes have it. Mr. Pinder? Yes, we had um, one substitute bus driver, Mr. Craig Schaffel, that has met uh, all the um, obligations to become a uh, substitute bus driver for us, and we're looking for permission for you, or for approval from the board for that. Craig, um, I make Craig a motion Schaffel. that we approve the substitute bus drivers for 2017-18 school year. Craig Schaffel? <coughs> Second. I have to repeat it just like you said it, don't I? Okay. You have a motion and you have a second. So you okay, so I just, okay. All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed say no. The ayes have it. I do. Okay. So we'll move on now to uh, policies for final read. Uh, substance use policy. Policy number 527 and regulation number 5271. Policy development policy number 110 and regulation 110.1. And inclement weather policy number 426 and regulation 426.1. Let's see. The substance use policy and regulation, the policy development policy, and the regulation. What was the inclement weather? I didn't see that one. I'm sorry. I, I didn't see that, so I wanted to... Uh... Okay. Okay. 
Okay. And we're going. We're sending these off to another read, or okay. This is the final. This is the final read. Yeah. Did you get any comments? Um, and before Mr. Far Farley responds to that question, I'd just like to remind everybody, recall that we approved poli a policy development policy where we're moving from three reads to two reads. Right. And some of these policies are going to go back and forth dependent upon when they were introduced. So some of them are going to go through th a third read, and, and the newer not. ones are going to go through two reads. Right. So as we come back to our policies, we'll note whether or not this one was a two-read policy or a three-read okay. policy until okay. all of the third reads are gone. Gotcha. Okay, so Mr. Farley, my apologies. No, that was great. <laughs> um, thank you so much for the clarification, Dr. Kane. I just wanted to say that we did not get comments on any of these policies or regulations that were put out uh, for almost 60 days. They were just a little short, but we certainly put them out for some time and encouraged comment did not receive any. So all of these are two reads, this whole pile? Two. These are all these are three, three reads. reads. Three reads. Right. Oh, okay. Three reads, right? Yep. That's correct. Yes, okay. All right. So may I have a motion to approve uh, these policies to be implemented into our school system? I move we implement these policies into our school system. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed say no. The ayes have it. We move on to uh, field trips, uh, Mattapique Middle School to Destination Imagin Imagination Global Competition in Tennessee, May 22nd to May 26th, 2018. I have a question. I was curious to say, was there any questions on this? Yeah. Uh, is there anywhere, this is highly unusual for us to make it this far. It, is there anywhere we can find five thousand dollars? They go every year. They they have. They have gone every year. Tennessee. Year. Yeah. I didn't remember. We that we thing. have. We've yeah. had. Uh, we approved uh, it every year. Yes. No, we don't pay it. They pay it. And, and how many students are we talking? Six. Well, they want six. To pay for it. Mm. Yeah. At uh, seven hundred and fifty dollars a student. Never paid for anything. We we have not. So no, we're not going uh, to have to pay. There are only a limited amount of field trips that we yeah. pay for. Um, our fine arts grant that we get from MSDE, we use a portion of that to send students to uh, state performance competitions in the performing arts. Everything else um, is has to be picked up by the individual student or family. Or if there's some students that are in the case of farms that maybe can't afford that, um, schools use a variety of different funding PTA to be able to pick that up to ensure that there's equ equity and that all students have access and can go. Okay. So we approve the going, but we yes. don't fund it. That's correct. Fund it. Right. That's correct. They were really something. They were in Maryland, though. No, Andrea Schulte was the um, art teacher, and she's taken a group almost every year since I've been on the board from Mattapique Middle School. It's to Maryland, I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. they yes, they they compete locally, and then and, and, they move and then if they go to the the global, which is in Tennessee. And what's the urgency on this one that we've received? It's May first. Just because it's so soon, we won't have another board meeting before until then. after May first. No, I mean the urgency. They they submitted a request for funding at one point because so. they have to let wherever they they're going in Tennessee know that they'll be there, and that's what the funding was all about. They've never. Really that's asked what for I it. got out of they it. Never no, they've never asked before. before. Okay. No, I just thought maybe it was not that I'm aware of. Visual. I never saw an email before. No, I've never the first seen anybody. Year. I didn't yes. either. So I was wondering if there was some urgency to this one that. They don't have time that to was do the a only thing that I got out of is because apparently they need an answer by May first. Okay. So, but we're not we are we're not this is not it. to fund it. This right. is just right. to approve them. Right. right. Okay. All right. So I have a may I have a motion to approve the Mattapique Middle School's Destination Imagination Enrichment Class to travel to the Destination Imagination Global Competition in Tennessee on May twenty second to May twenty sixth, two thousand and eighteen. So moved. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed say no. The ayes have it. We move on to approval for trustee for the ESMEC Health Alliance. Mr. Mark Farley. So um, as uh, Ms. Um, as Robin retired, we needed to replace someone to sit on that council. And so we are um, moving forward with Mr. Mark Farley. 
I move that we appoint Mark Farley to the Eastern Shore of Maryland Education Consortium Health Alliance trustee. Position. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed say no. How bad do you want to go, Mark? <laughs> Just to serve. Sorry. Serve, that's all. <laughs> the eyes have it. <laughs> I couldn't help myself. <laughs> then we knew, move on to um, new course approval. Um, We've got mm -hmm. the Energy Trust. 906. Oh, did I miss something? Mm -hmm. Ms. It's still. Graf, fill both of those. She sat issues. on both of those. Mm -hmm. And so this one is for the, oh, uh, yep, the ESMIC Energy Trust. So we would like to move forward with Mr. Pender, Sid Pender as trustee, and uh, Ms. Carla Pullen, who uh, runs facilities as the alternate trustee um, as uh, Ms. Landgraf has retired. The case said, I'll ask you the same question. You really want to do this? <laughs> Chomping at the bit. Yeah. <laughs> at least he's got an alternate. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> May I have a motion to approve Mr. Sid Pender as the Eastern Shore of Maryland Educational Custorium, yeah, Sorium Energy Trust trustee and Miss Mrs. Carla Pullen as the alternative trustee. So moved. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed say no. Now's the time, Sid. <laughs> The eyes, the eyes have it. And uh, now we're moving on to the new course approval. Madam Superintendent and members of the board, 9.07 new course approval. We are seeking uh, your approval of five courses uh, just to inform the public as well. Uh, per Comar uh, 310.01, uh, as well as on page 12 of the Board of Education Handbook, you are required to approve any new course of study. Uh, so we want to make sure that we're in alignment with uh, that Comar regulation, and therefore we will be bringing you any time there is a new course that we offer in our school system. It needs to come before you first for discussion uh, and final approval. With that, uh, AP Music Theory. Music uh, Theory is a course that we've had uh, for some time. Uh, we would like to move that to the advanced placement level. Um, theatrical Productions and Management uh, would be a new course. Uh, this course is really an advanced to our uh, theater production course, which is a, is a general course. This is more advanced, which allows students more independent uh, in, set, in set design, theater design, and, and so forth. Uh, the last three are in uh, the area of career and technology education. The Certified Clinical Medical Assistant, CCMA, uh, is the third course in the pathway of our allied health professions. Uh, students, when they take this uh, course sequence in this area, they have multiple areas for certification. This course actually prepares students for certification in certified clinical medical assistance. Um, it is part of our, uh, the funding for this is supported through our Perkins grant, so materials of instruction and so forth, and it's approved as a pathway um, in the Maryland State Department of Education. The, the last two, Introduction to Geographical Information Systems and Advanced Geospatial Systems, are part of two pathways in our Homeland Security uh, programs. Uh, those are uh, within uh, the third sequence, um, and again, these are both supported by uh, grants from MSDE. Uh, there's an approval process uh, from the courses, the instructors. Uh, we're just allowing our students more opportunity and more choice. And we are hiring no new teachers for these positions? We, we are not. We have uh, currently all certified teachers. Uh, this just allows us opportunities for our high schools and our high schools they're in that scheduling process right now as uh, they put out and when we put out our program of study then they take a look at that they offer to the student body students select and then based upon that student selection interest which drives which courses they're going to run and which courses they're not this just allows us more opportunities for kids okay thank you Minister, yeah. uh, I, i'm sorry sure. is there any extra funding going into it like is there like, like, I'm just, I just want to know if, like, there's extra funding like that you're, are you spending, like, more on the classes that you're implementing, or are they just, like, are you not spending any extra money on them? Like, I'm just curious. Well, 
any time that we run a course. So let's take the, the current technology education mm -hmm. courses. So we currently have a grant from the Maryland State Department of Education mm -hmm. um, that allows us, so that, that funding is allocated to us from, okay. from the yeah, State Department. Okay. Awesome. That's okay. that side. So if there's any other courses, if it's a singleton course, which in the theater production, mm -hmm. um, one of the things that we would do in the approval process is then lay that out um, because it would also have to have materials of instruction, would be able to have to have um, a curriculum to be able to implement that. Um, that would be um, provided locally within the curriculum instruction budget of materials of instruction. That's a singleton course. Good, that's a great question. Yeah, so we sort of are, but we don't have to get more funding to do this. We're putting we, funding into it that we already have. Sure, sure. When we get into singleton courses like this, we can pick those up between our, our locally allocated materials of instruction budget. When you start getting into, I use the, the elementary math cool. as an example, which is going to be up for adoption next year, you're talking four or five different grade levels, right? So that's part of the, now we go back to the superintendent's budget yes. textbook. Why we've requested 785,000 is when we did the five-year trends, we know it's going to cost us 785,000 over the next five years right. to ensure that we have the right instructional materials in place right. and also play catch up to some of the materials that we have that are over 30 years old. Exactly. Exactly. And that just shouldn't happen. No today that we and have. And we do have materials that are over or close to 30 years. Yes, ma'am. Uh, 18 years was discussed recently, but that was just one category at one school that was verified, apparently. If we called all of our schools and asked them, what's your oldest te textbook, and we could be close to 30. And of course, what's your newest could be as early as last year because we brought in a new science curriculum last year. Sure, and, and, and you wouldn't have to uh, call any school because we have all that information for you. I did Someone so else did. So <laughs> if, if that's information It, it that was very um, pr clearly more. presented and somewhat misunderstood we to that we have old textbooks. We do not have sufficient textbooks in some of our courses. That's correct. The question was, how much does math change? I think we all know the math we are using today is not the math we used five years ago. And the fourth question was, how often do we have to write a history book? I certainly don't want my children today being educated without the last 20 years of history included. Um, so, I'm sorry. No, we the, align to our state standards. Exactly. That, and, and that's, that's what changes. Dictates. Exactly. So whether the funding is there or not, or approved or supported, we have guidelines we must meet. Thank you. I have a couple of questions. Um, the theatrical one and the AP music, are those under a certain pathway or those are elective? No, they're, they're not in a, in a specific pathway as they would be in the career completer program such as the CTE. So they're elective. Or My other question is, are these then going to be offered at both high schools? Great question. Uh, going into the following school year, um, the theatrical productions, as I spoke with the principals today, they're not planning on offering that in the spring or fall. They want to be able to offer it in the outlier years. Uh, currently, uh, AP Music Theory um, does have over 20 students that will be signed up to be able to take that course. And then, of course, the, you know, the CTE programs, Homeland Security, that we both offer. And then, yes, ma'am. Thank you. Yes. Okay, so we move on to, uh, may I have a motion to approve the following courses? AP Music Theory, Theatrical Production and Management, Certified Clinical Medical Assistant, CCMA, Introduction to Geographic Information Systems, and Advanced Geo, how do you pronounce that again? Spatial. Geospatial. Spatial, okay. Systems and Remote Sensing. So moved. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed say no. 
the ayes have it we're moving on to the textbook adoption for the final approval for middle school science grades six seventh and eighth Madam Superintendent, I, I have a question. Oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. No, we would just request uh, that, uh, and Mr. Page is here. If there's any specific questions to that, uh, that has gone out for uh, 30 days. We have not received any public comment um, from the community uh, relative to that. So we would just like to request that to be approved. And what budget year would that money come from? Sure. That money is in the the current allocation of FY18. So this Textbook money textbook capital budget in Thank you. yes in in capital so it is budgeted as soon as it is approved uh, Mr. Page will go to work on um, the procurement process okay thank you mm -hmm. I, I make a motion that we approve the um, middle school science uh, textbook grades six seven eight second all in favor say aye 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 all opposed say no the ayes have it. Move on to 2018-19, 2019-2020 school calendars and waiver request. So as Dr. Pearson makes her way forward, um, as we know, at the uh, a couple of weeks ago, we had two snow days, early spring uh, snow days, and that took us over um, <coughs> our limit for snow days. So we used five and this put us two additional days over. Mm -hmm. At our last board meeting, we had conversation about the calendar and there was some discussion about the three snow days that was built in and whether or not we should uh, include the additional day that we may need to use if, um, if we went over three days. So we went and as you know, we put a, um, a, uh, a one question survey out to families asking them whether or not they would prefer to have that day uh, included on the calendar if we use additional days beyond an additional day beyond the three that were allocated and as you can see we had uh, just under 2,000 uh, respondents there were 1,900 response responses with about 80 scoot that up 87 almost 88 percent saying yes, they would like to please include that date on that calendar. There were 229 responses, or about 12% that said no, don't do it. So we wanted to be sure because there was, a, there was discussion about whether or not that should be added. So we just wanted to be clear about whether or not it should. So folks. I, just, I still have a, a big concern with only having three days on there. I mean, it, it's, and I understand the date and if, if, if Obviously, they want a date on there, what days we would use. But again, the dates that are on there are in January, and most of our snow comes in February and March. As we so found out this year. I, I, I don't really think, I mean, I know Talbot, I think, has six snow days built in. And their professional development is different. So the right. one, yeah, their professional development days, they've got the same calendar. But what I wanted to bring out, what I wanted to point out, was right about March the 28th, I think it was, that emergency legislation that I sent to you all mm -hmm. to say, okay, now the state is saying you can use right. an additional five days right. um, if you need to, to go beyond that June 15th right, if there are additional snow days. So here's, you know, we've had some conversations with um, our principals and, and whatnot, and so we're trying to figure out how we might be able to get another day in there. So this is an idea. We can put it out to the uh, public, but we're going to have to uh, be rather swift about our response and approving this calendar because we've got to submit a calendar to the state by April 17th. Today is... Uh, what the 11th. 11th so we're talking next week so what we thought is if we have the three and we put the additional day for January 31st that would cut that professional development day <coughs> it would put high schools in a bit of a bind but that's the day that we have we also talked about in October now no snow wouldn't be happening as early not necessarily I should say it has snowed in right, October not necessarily, before but not as usually early as um, October <laughs> but if we took away um, the day that we have slated for professional development teachers go to sometimes we have not had as much participation of late um, to MSEA on that Friday I believe it's October 19th you see 19th. that it's one? It's the 18th, actually. Wait a minute. Maybe. No, Let's see if I'm looking at the wrong calendar. Day. I'm looking 19th. at 1920. Yeah, sorry. Professional development 18th. is the 18th. But yeah. didn't we 
negotiate yeah. that day to give them so they could go to the well, conference. You know what? We don't have as many teachers going to that conference mm -hmm. um, as it used to be. Years I know, ago. but it so was it, a negotiated item, wasn't it? It was. It was not the calendar. It was not. not negotiable. No. It but was no. No. Have, no. Not on the calendar. For them in their contract to give them that day. No, we didn't give it to them. It was just a day that wasn't. Scheduled. Okay. So, although okay. it is a long-standing practice to allow. Okay. That but day. not a written agreement. That's correct. Okay. But are you Thank looking you. at the MSEA at or the day before? Because I thought MSEA. it was. The whole two days? Yeah. One. One. Just that yeah, because Friday? that's what my suggestion, yeah. now this is only my suggestion, but going through this calendar before, on the 18th where it says all schools closed, professional development, on the, did you do, let me get back up here. I mean, I'm sorry, that's the, yeah, that's right. Yeah. Um, on October 10th, it says all schools closed half a day. Why can't we make the 18th a half of a day instead of the 10th? All, no, 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 leave the 10th, but now you have another full day of school. I mean, it counts as a full day. If, it counts saying. as oh, a full day. Oh, I see. Day if you make it a half, half a day of instead a day. of a day off. Instead I of see. a day I'm off. I'm sorry. I see. And we know and parents some don't school like school systems half, did adjust their calendar we, that we way. We know this parents year. most parents don't like a half day, but if if it you if you count. were to do that, it, it counts at the end That's of the, the school year. I'm thinking that, you know, parents would be happy about that. As opposed to being off all day and losing that day. And losing and that day. Having to figure we, out how to do Because if it's a half a it day, it's day. considered a day of school. Correct. That's a thought. Um because you've already got it down on the 10th for, for the half a day for mm -hmm. professional development. Mm -hmm. So just on the 18th. We also same. have February 1st. Do we? February 1st. What you're also saying is that we're cutting out PD days that we really well, do Well, no, need. no, no. We're not cutting them out. That we just make them a, a half day. a day instead of a full that day. That was a day off. Yeah, so and you're right. I just noticed that. And February 1st could be... Um, okay. So January thirty first, January thirty first, and February first are professional development days. Except high school use those days to do transition. Right. Right. Um, and so one or the other of those days. That's why we said January thirty first. Um, so one of the uh, or right. the other of those days. So you know, if, if we if we did that, then then there's that, that extra no day, day in there. I mean, it's just something to. I guess I have a question about this year. So. Because there's talk about extending beyond the 15th and allowing people to make up their snow days that way, which I totally disagree because we have told these parents all along school is out on the 15th, period. Is that law for this and year? They, or? Yeah. Oh, and they very likely are planning to get on an airplane that night and leave town. Right. That's a lot more serious impact than the day we took from the right. spring break, and that created havoc. Right. And for a waiver so for that? that's where I'm asking, have we asked for a waiver it's so we there. don't have to extend the, the year? Oh, you, there's a letter created. On. There's so, a letter. So what happens is I submit the letter. I need your approval right. Right. to submit that letter. Right. And, so, I, and, and we don't great. have any so. idea what the climate is there well, where we're requesting the, the, how that's going to be viewed. I mean, that's, that, that letter is perfect. The, it explains it all. So right, I wanna, but I we don't know how letter. that's going to be right. viewed. I want to compartmentalize. Okay. So okay. now we're, right. before okay, we were talking about the 1819 yes, calendar, I'm now we're back to our current year's calendar. So I'll go back to our current year's calendar. So currently we are asking for a waiver. Schools are supposed to be in session for 180 days for students and so we're going to ask for a waiver of those two additional days that we missed right. so that we don't have to bring students back on uh, the 18th and 19th after you know that that last right. week of school so the waiver request is for 178 days for the district right. for the state superintendent to approve 178 days right. because at this point the only day that we have left in the year to make up possibly would be May 28th, which is Memorial Day, sure. and it's such a Gonna heavily traveled day thing. that we did not think that right. that was a viable day. There exactly. are no other days. Right. Exactly. Do I know what state superintendent is going to say yeah. at this point? No, because since, these, since we wrote this request, 
that emergency legislation occurred. Right. To say that right. now you can go five right. days beyond right. the 15th. So I don't have a sense at all right. of right. what the state superintendent the is, is going to say. I like in your letter where it says that um, we're mandated to do a thousand and we count our hours. hours. Yes, 1080. So we count and our we're hours. Way over we're, our we're hours. We're fine on our hours. The closest is we're about within 15 hours for high schools, but right. I think that we're we're fine with so that. So that may be they may take that exception because we've of got our hours. Have the hours. Mm -hmm. And I imagine there's other schools asking that are in for the same, three days that, because that in the same we boat. did take up one of our we days. did take one we did we were exactly. good. Mm -hmm. exactly we did showed the good and faith that you said was your goal we that right. effort right. Right. and right. we did right we right. did that so, so I, I my personal opinion is is that I think that we should look at the 18th or the 30th what was the date the 31st or the first and make those professional development days a half a day and then that way we can have four extra day. we can have four days instead of cool. uh, I'm just going to move that we approve that letter and yeah. then we'll move that, can be, that can be wiped up or is yeah. that influence no. that it doesn't no. influence no. that no I, I approve the letter I, I think that we should approve the letter also right, call for the motion for that yeah that. I uh, I'll make a motion that we approve the letter for the waiver for the two days missed uh, to be sent to superintendent of Maryland schools so I'm I second. Okay. All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed say no. The ayes have it. Okay. Would you say again, Annette, what your plan is for? Well, this? I just think that if you look up there on October 10th, we already have a half of a day for professional development. So the kids go, so that's a whole day, correct? So if you go to the 18th, we're giving them the whole day off for professional development make that a half a day of instruction which makes it a full day a full day Counted. of school right or uh january 31st or february 1st because all schools are closed again for professional development days and that gets four snow days on our calendar right which is that would put the year. four days the back into the only thing i'm calendar. concerned is on on maybe we need to know what was planned for those. Are those grading so, days? Well, that, so are on, those? Yes. So on the 18th, that was a district professional development day, which we have. I don't think we have. We signed a contract with the. We, we planned a professional development around cultural proficiency right. um, for the district. So that's a, a big. Um, here. I didn't drink that's that's going to be a big I issue. I thought we weren't messing with the professional development days. We were messing for, with the days off and saying let's go a half a day. Days off are of, professional. Those are oh, professional oh, development. I'm sorry. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So yeah. the did ones you, you discussed. On the 31st okay. and the first. So mm -hmm. the 31st and the first, of course, that's a transition for that um, first semester to second semester. They need grading. So they yeah. are in need of grading Absolutely. days. But if we went over, we were going to elect to use the 31st. So that's what that date was that we that wanted we to add right to the calendar. So. You know, no matter how you look at it, um, the day that seemed most viable to us is that, um, well, it would have to be the 18th because the 19th is, is a done deal. Sure, and if I can, Madam Superintendent, <coughs> you know, and I know this is complex, but one thing I just want to add to okay. frame in, there are not a lot of <coughs> opportunities for our curriculum instruction folks to deliver system-wide professional development. So I'll give you a very good example. You just approved Mr. Mr. Page's middle school science. Really, there's only going to be one day that he will see those secondary teachers in August. And so when we think about adequate professional development for teachers to implement, one day of professional development is not enough. And think about that transition that we had with our elementary science, right? Right. They had one day or half a day. One of, day. It just is insufficient. And we're asking for that same type of you issue when we okay. cut right, out yeah. uh, that kind of professional development. So, mm -hmm. you know, it, it is, it's definitely a toss up. It's a, it's a long thought process um, and just trying to get an additional day, a way to get just that fourth along. day is to say that January transition. We've talked with our administrators, is not pleasant, but we will have to make it work. Now, if we have to go back, if we use a day in October, the only day that we have here available, that cuts out, we won't have professional development 
you know, until January, January. and then that's just the one day. And for high school, it's it's none. But did, wouldn't did, it? It would be. It would just be a half of a day on the 18th. I'm just saying where it says all schools closed, professional was, development, just make that a half of a day for students. But they lose a half a day professional development. I understand that, but then that way you do get that Something. fourth day credit. into that snow. Did we reach out to the sister counties to see if they're talking about doing three as well? We, we had talked we've about got, that. We've got several doing three, we've got several doing four, so we took a survey across the, the, the state and there are some doing three, some doing four, some doing five. Gotcha. Even. Um, professional development looks different across sure. the, right. across the right. state, whereas we sometimes try to give that half day work day so that we could do grades. They don't always do right. that. Different districts do different, different things, things right. for different right. reasons. Right. Gotcha. Exactly for different reasons. Now, and just keep in mind, which it hasn't been said, but it's assumed that everybody knows that in October, if we take a day in October, we know that we won't have had snow yet. So if we right. if we use a day and then we don't end up using all three of our days or if we don't need a fourth day, right. then the idea would be that we go that, dismiss right. one, or adjourn one day, one day earlier. Mm -hmm. um, so that's a big if there. Sure. There are not, you know, a lot of days. And, and we don't know if, if we're going to be told to come back. If, if we use, you know, six or seven days, if we're going to be said, you, you got to come back on Monday, Tuesday, the next week anyway. Right. Right. Um, you know, so we don't know what the feel will be for right. that. Is this well, legislation just too. for this year, or is it, it is forever on? Forever, it was so, emergency legislation, so, right. so it made it effective so, now versus waiting until July. But it is so from maybe. Now uh, well, it sounds maybe like to me we don't makeup? have a choice to just leave it. Not a lot of options. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and yeah. I was wondering if we run over, what well, we need to make that aware to the parents that we may have to go into June 17, 18, You know, because that's the new legislation. Yep. And right. to tell them not to plan. I, I mean, I'm fine with it. It was just a, it was just it was a an suggestion. Idea. I, know. I, I know. You know, I was just, I, I know that there's been some concerns with only, I've heard concerns about only having three days into the, yeah. into the school calendar for snow. I mean, there, the last we'll few have years that fourth. until. We'll have that fourth if, right. if we need to right. use it. Exactly. So, exactly. That so, I mean, I'm fine with it. I just wanted to. To bring that to everyone's attention, that's all that I thought that maybe we could do something and it's a like tough, that. It's so. a tough one. It is. It is. It's, it's it a is. tough call. So and we um, don't know that it won't change again next year. <coughs> I mean, yeah, well, I this agree. This came part of out of the blue. Part of our explanation ought to be saying <coughs> that there is now legislation. We may actually, if we have more we than four days, absolutely. we will do school 17, 18, 19 June. Yeah, I mean, if we're going to put those other yeah. explanation that's, on there, then you got to have to put that in yeah. We'll send communication to the right. community. So, right. because I said that I'd get back to them once we right. heard back from the state right. superintendent. So, right. that would be part of that communication. No, no, this, I'm also talking about calendars going forward, the language yeah. on the bottom. Yeah. In the where we said yeah. we were going to keep the language, mm -hmm. we may have to add language that right. says in an event of even more, we would move into June. the following week could be a possibility. So the October five, there could be possibly five additional days. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yep. So okay. if we okay. leave it the way it is and use January 31st or February 1st as that extra day, we're not talking about a day in October then, or are we still? No, we're, we're not. Miss Annette. Okay, I'm clear. So, but if you Fine. use the 31st and the 1st, those are the last two days before we switch semesters, correct? That's what, yes. So you'd have to either move the semester switch back because if you have students in a half day, the that Thursday and Friday, like what what would students do in class? Because then they're just going to be stuck in the first semester because right, grades right. will be due, and you can't switch them those two days. So you'd have to move the whole semester switch well, back. I a think week, that correct? I think we we've just come to the conclusion that we're just going to uh, approve the calendars the way they are. So okay, there's okay. not much we can do about okay. it. So okay, so uh, may I have a motion to approve the 2018-19 and the 2019-20 school calendars to go to our stakeholders for a first read. So moved. So moved. Second. All in favor say aye. Aye. All opposed say no. The ayes have it. And we've already uh, approved the uh, waiver request request letter. Should okay. We, I'm sorry, but that went before you send it out. Should we put that extra line in? Oh, we definitely certainly will. I just okay. made a note. Then we don't have mm -hmm. to. Thank okay. You. Okay. So I do have a question. If we could put that slide back up. Okay. Um, the second. <coughs> conference part of the year for elementary is that going to be like it was this year that we are in this project right now elementary school conferences are in swing they start when the end of the week 
I've had parents come to me and say, I really wanted a conference with my right teacher, but she said I don't need one, that she has no concerns and my child is doing fine, but she still wants one. She can, she she can, can have, yeah. yeah. Okay, so we have teachers now who have all of their students scheduled for conferences, but we really didn't give them enough time to do that. Mm -hmm. They're struggling oh, to get them in yeah. because yeah. we only gave them a half a day to do it. Yeah. We talked about whether that was a good thing last year. That was what they brought to us as their suggestion. They didn't think that so many people would, number one, want one, or so many teachers would feel their student needed Go one. The there may be some teachers who don't have very many at all scheduled, yeah, but I know I for sure we have teachers that of their 24 students, they have 22 scheduled conferences and, so, and not enough time. And so that's how we have to get creative as teachers the, and administrators. So and it's not just on these committee. dates, that, yeah. but, but the calendar committee doesn't have anything to do with that part because it's not just these dates mm -hmm. that can be for parent conferences. Right. A parent can request right. a conference whenever. So if they if there's not a schedule where we can get them in on that day, then the teacher can schedule it at another time. Because as we just had the conversation, we certainly can't close school for students for another day right. for more conferences. And, and I think we talked about that when we approved this we last year. But I understand teachers. that it's not quite working the way the everybody thought it would. Yeah teachers doing verbal uh, verbal telephone teacher consults teacher or email person. consults they really um, want I mean, this face to face it. with their teacher i believe you brought that up as a concern know, even last year when we talked about this oh gosh you're gonna <laughs> tell them they can't have these conferences there's never really been enough time for them and now we're going to cut them in half i think the repercussions of that are starting to surface is there a suggestion do you um, I would ask them again, how do you want to handle this? They've tried this. This was their idea. If I remember it being presented to us, they came up with this idea. Well, we really don't need all of that conference time. That was brought to the calendar committee and us. But now the teachers are kind of like, really? We don't have this time? But I guess there was either a communications glitch or they didn't expect to be fully scheduling their whole class. So and what we'll I do hear they are. Is we'll work with administrators to help them understand how, how they can, can do that different to meet with next parents. time. Exactly. Yes. It doesn't have to be on those specific yes. days. Yes. It's whenever we can get them. Right. Back. Right. Any parent and with a request. We know we don't want to a tell conference. a parent no. Absolutely. Exactly. But does a parent who didn't get a scheduled mm. conference and now has a, a concern, gee, I really wanted it, do they understand they can do it by phone? Pick up the teacher. That's you know, what I'm yeah. we work with the principal. Do so you really have teachers? to sit in front of the teacher? But even if they want to sit with the teacher then they can. on a different day, yes. they can. Yes, okay, okay. Yeah. So, Just move on right that being said. Okay, um, we've moved on to transfer of funds. Um, this is the letter, yeah, correct? Yeah, and what I um, did not give to you, thank you for that light, is and turn uh, this one Dr. Off, Gorsuch, he, um, he went and he printed out, and I'll just pass these down, he printed out a spreadsheet which shows the transfer of those, because I thought I heard uh, Mrs. George say that she wanted to see it in writing. So he yeah. printed out a spreadsheet that shows the transfer of those funds. The very top category you'll see is administration. And you'll see the transfer for the month of April of $21,600. Okay. But this doesn't explain where it's going. Well, it's in your well, administration, administration salaries. Mm -hmm. Right, and you move, and this is by each month, and you move to this April. Month. Right, wow, that's right, and that's the amount that we're taking out it from came there from mm -hmm. salaries, from salaries to, to contracted, contracted services, that's which what your is your next line. So from here to here, and you'll see to the left. So the twenty-one the, six is all going to Mr. or Dr. Gorsuch. Yeah, and what we really could show, Dr. Gorsuch. Um, well, I guess we showed all of it for the month of April, even though part of it is going to be for April and part of it is going to be for May. But earlier but you had said for Dr. Pearson as well. So where is we, that we money didn't, transfer? We didn't need to make that transfer. Okay. If, if I could, Dr. Pearson is already being paid out of the salary category. 
So there's no need to make a transfer among subcategories. Okay. Okay. I, it was just mentioned. That's why right, I'm yeah. asking. Right. Yeah. Right. And uh, you're correct. Okay. So is there anything in addition? What other questions do you have that we might be able okay, to answer? Okay. So I understand this. So we're taking the 10,400 and making it 21,600. Got it. And is, are these salaries? This is just attrition. Is that the, this is, is current. This is current salary. The, the salary money that's available to transfer to contracted services comes from the salary that you're not paying Mrs. Landgraf for the rest of the year. The her current. Oh, attrition. Uh, okay. Yeah. I, yeah. You could. Okay. Okay. I. But it's it's okay. while we have it, we're having a little trouble with that. It's because it's her yeah. current year, current yeah. salary, yeah. not. Some sure. that we do that we had left over from right. last year. Exactly. That's what usually true. Right. I'm sorry. I was thinking. Attrition usually we speak of is from one fiscal year to yes. the next. I'm yes. Yes. Okay. Okay. So may I have a motion to approve the transfer of funds letter as presented to be sent to the county as amended? Oh, as, as amended. amended. I'm sorry. Let me do that one more time. <laughs> okay. May I have a motion to approve the transfer? A funds letter that is amended to be sent to the county. So moved. Second. All in favor say aye. Aye. All opposed say no. The ayes have it. Okay, we are moving on to future action items, policies for first read, cell phone policy number 603 and regulation number 603.1. I move that we send these two um, instructions out for first read. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed say no. The ayes have it. Policies for second read. Delinquent acts of a serious nature, policy number 509 and regulation 509.1 and political campaign materials policy number 631. I don't know what that one is. It's a tag. Is this so two of two? On. I'm sorry, what is it? It's a tag. Two of two on these? Yeah, I'm, <coughs> I'm no, sorry. Two of three. Two of three, okay. Because they were introduced before this the passage okay. of the new policy Thank on you. policy. I wanted to see what that one was. So. Well, I move that we send these three policies out for. Second read. Second. Yeah. So moved. Um, all in favor say aye. 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 All opposed say no. The ayes have it. Uh, textbook adoption, 30 day review of materials, Spanish levels one, two, three, four, and advanced placement, French levels one, two, three, and four, high school health. Make a motion that we. Uh, adopt the um, three thirty day review. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, adoption uh, for a thirty day review of the materials of Spanish one two three four advanced placement, French one two three four, and high school health. Second. All in favor say aye. Aye. All opposed say no. The ayes have it. Do we have anyone that would like to uh, participate um, in public comment at this time? We will move on. Uh, future meetings and events. April 18th, there will be a work session from 11 a.m. to 2 p.m. The next board meeting will be at uh, will be on May uh, 2nd. June 18th is the annual Eastern Shore Superintendents and Board Members Education Conference, and that will be from 8.30 a.m. to 3.30 p.m. Chesapeake College. At Chesapeake College. At Chesapeake College. EHEC Center, uh, and that is room 110. Uh, is there anything else anyone else would like to mention or comment before? I would. I'd just like to thank our students at the um, P it's PFY yes. who made our lovely cards and invited us to join them um, sometime. So I want to get one of them open so that we can see the. Open it with enthusiasm. Like okay, so they want <laughs> yeah, me to snap they go it like so this. that we can get all of the. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> now I get what these little things were for. <laughs> 
<laughs> too cute, too cute. So, sweet. so our students at uh, Graysonville Elementary. So How thank cute. you. And, and church. How cute. And I have church. And Sudlersville. And, and, and church. Okay, very I good. I have one from yeah. church and one so from Sudlersville. So you want us to just awesome. show up and okay. see what I think. you're doing? Yeah, I have one from Izzy, yes. Popeye after school. This is actually part of a service learning project that they're doing to spread kindness in their community. Aww. local, it's not local, national events. And um, they will all get service learning credit for it if they go through all of the seven minute practices for it. Wonderful, nice. wonderful. Um, Thank you. I don't know if anybody remembers National Lights Out night was a PFI experience and it, okay, lights in, uh, <laughs> or lights on, lights on. Oh. I was able to go to um, Churchill yeah, and okay. observe theirs. They love this program. They love staying after school with their teachers, their friends. Now their parents were there this day, but I understand as a general rule, they're not. They just can't wait for it to get started and their activity to begin. And it was a real rewarding experience to be able to just watch them. Thanks. And they're very aware of who's watching them, trust me. They're all like, you know, look who's here. So I, I enjoyed it, I enjoyed it. And thank, thank you for you. inviting us and including us. May I have a motion to adjourn? So moved. Second. <laughs> what are you all waiting for? I fell asleep. Sorry. <laughs> all in favor say aye. 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 All opposed say no. Thank you, and we will see you on May 2nd.